Hey Martin here, I'd like to share a video with you about how to store extension cords. And I'm going to show you several different methods. Uh, these methods, you can find videos about uh, a lot of these methods different places around the web, but I thought it'd be real nice to show you one video with several methods. Okay. Now these methods can also be used for ropes, uh, smaller cords, and even small hoses or garden hoses. I'll show you one method in particular later uh, that I use just for garden hoses. So, thanks for watching and hope you enjoy it. Here's a list of the different methods I'm going to show you. Let's get started. One thing to keep in mind when you're working with cords or ropes or anything like that, one of the main things is to mind your ends. If you know where your ends are and you keep them away from the mast in the middle, you're going to do pretty well because there's no way uh, what's in the middle can get tangled up if your ends are away from it. Okay? So if, I, if I'm going to pile up my cord, I can take the end, throw it further away, and then pile all my cord here, and it doesn't matter what happens in the middle here. Here's my other end. If they're away from this pile, I can jumble this pile up all I want, but I can go to either end. I'll take this one and pull on it, keep it away, pull this through, and it's going to pull through just fine as long as I haven't gotten this end tied up in the center of that mess. This method I want to show you, I call the bucket stuff method, uh, for lack of a better word. And I love this method because I use the bucket stuff. Uh, I, I leave cords uh, plugged in in the corner of my garage. I use the bucket stuff for, uh, I have a little sling that I tied on the, my electric lawnmower and it has a bucket with a cord dedicated to it. I have um, and you could also use it, yeah, I don't use it for uh, uh, my weed whipper, my weed whipper, I use a coil, but, uh, so here's the bucket stuff. I also, I also use the bucket stuff for uh, my small diameter air hoses, my polyurethane uh, air hoses that stuff into buckets, okay? So uh, let me get the other end of this. So this is the plug end. And I'll, um, for the bucket stuff, I might plug this into a wall and leave it plugged into a wall. And then it, when it's plugged in, I can just feed this cord to the bucket very simply and easily. And you just shove it down in there. I've also seen people use uh, boxes for the bucket stuff. Um, They'll use like a cardboard box with holes on the end uh, and shove the uh, the plug through uh, a hole on the end. Or with the bucket stuff, you could also drill a hole in the bottom and run the cord out of the bottom. But if you ever want to use a bucket, dump the cord out and use the bucket to hold something, it'll leak out. So I just stuck this cord in here. Voila. If this one's plugged into the wall, I can just drop this in there whenever I need it. I just go get it and I can just walk away with this and take it to where I need it. The bucket might fall over, but the, the cord just pays out uh, perfectly. Check it out. So that's my bucket stuff method. Let's look at the fold and wrap method. Fold and wrap method is I take my end, drop it down to my feet so it stays out of the middle of all the mess. 
I'm going to make my mask I'll fold up my cord by laying it first off to the left. If I lay it off to the left, i got to come back across toward the right. Then I go back towards the left, back towards the right. And I'm essentially folding it back and forth across my hand. And I'm pulling it the same distance each time, so both arms outstretched. If I want a shorter distance here, I can keep my elbows at my side and do this, fold like that. And then I'm going to get, but I'm going to have all those lengths equal. Or I can do one arm out, one arm out, one arm out, to try to keep all that the same length. Okay. But I typically like to go fast, so I do a full length out, full length out, fold one way, fold the other. Fold one way, fold the other. Fold one way, fold the other. Fold one way, and the other. And I've got my two dangling, two ends dangling. I can plug those together, like so. Hold those up at the top grab all my cords and wrap. There I have my cords nice and neatly stored. Okay, you can throw those in any box, anywhere, uh, on the ground, on a shelf, whatever, and they're going to be really easy to undo. Let's see how we undo it. We grab it, and undo our Velcro strap. These are just Velcro cable ties. I love these things. These are the colored ones, I believe by 3M. They're, these are a little pricey, the colored ones. Um, but you can get black and gray ones for super cheap online. And this is two of them hooked together for uh, a bigger cord. So I cinch. To undo it all, I just grab my uh, co uh, outlet and plug receptacle and plug, and then I can just take this and toss it, okay? It all comes out very nice and neat, no tangle, okay? Wonderful way to store cords, and I store cords this way a lot. So I hope you like this one. It's the fold and wrap method. If you don't have the Velcro twist tie, Here's how I handle that situation. Right, and I have my two ends dangling down. I can plug those together now to keep them together. Grab them up high, and then just start wrapping them up around up at the top. Get this where it's kind of short. Now the one thing I don't like about this is you are wrapping this up and you're in it, end up putting kinks in your uh, wire at these locations. But uh, that's a way to uh, store a cord if you don't have the uh, Velcro wraps. But I love those little, little wraps. I call this the fold and knot because I'm essentially folding up the cable. Uh, here I've got it folded in half once. May as well just plug these together to keep them straight. And then I'm going to hold on to the business end and go and find the center. And I fold it in half. And now I'm going to fold it in half again. Okay, take my business end fold that. And then I'll fold it one more time. I've got a pretty big loop here. So I can take this and tie this in a knot. I used to do this more often until I found easier methods. But uh, then you have your big long cable just folded up tied in a knot. 
it works. Uh, uh, what I like to use this for these days is short extension cords, six feet, twelve feet of uh, you know the uh, you know eighteen gauge the extension cords, lamp extension cords, things like that. Here's a method called the over and under method. I'm not uh, super keen on this for extension cords, but it's a technique you can use. It's, it's nice for really supple wires that you might have uh, for microphones and stuff that, if you run a lot of cables for a band or something like that. Um, but I'll show you how it goes. You're essentially uh, doing a forward coil, backward coil. Um, and alternating. So here, I'm actually twisting this to get a forward coil, and then I twist it the other way to get a backward coil, and I slip it in behind the last one. Now I'm doing a forward coil. You can see how it's not the, it's, it's an older uh, cable. Uh, extension cord is just not the greatest to do this method with. But I'm going a forward loop, and then it kind of looks like a forward loop, but I'm actually wrapping it behind. And what this actually does is, while I'm coiling it one way on this loop, I actually coil it the other way to do the back loop. Tuck it behind, and uh, again with a nice soft supple, uh, with a rope or something very supple, it would, it, this would be a great method. But I'm not super crazy about this for extension cords. So over, wrap it forward, tuck it behind, wrap it forward. Tuck it behind and wrap it forward one last time. And then I can grab my two ends, plug those together to keep them where I know they're not all knotted up. And I can, I can, in this case, I could use my Velcro straps or simple wrap here. Short, and I'll shove it through there. And there, I've got my open. Oh, it's not super beautiful, but this this does uh, unwrap very easily. Once you do this, and you pitch this out, and there are no there's no kinks because you're not coiling it. Now I'd like to show you the stitch method. With the stitch method, it's it's a lot like uh, crocheting, but uh, what I like to do is fold this in half. So I'm going to go through here and fold my cord in half. You can fold it into quarters too if you want, uh, which will make the stitching process faster, but then it takes the time of the uh, folding. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my two ends together. Then I'm going to find the far end, or the middle, if you will. I'm going to take this loop, put my hand through it, and grab it, then run that loop over my hand to create another loop, like that. And I put my hand through the loop, grab the cord, pull it through. Put my hand through the new loop, grab the cord, pull it through. So you can see why I'm calling this the stitch method. I just do this over and over. Put my hand through, grab it, pull it through. Maybe if I get closer you can see it a little better. Grab it, pull it through. All the way up to the end. And it's kind of making this daisy chain.
Finally, when you're done at your end, you just put the, uh, the business end through that last loop, and you've got a, a, essentially a, a stitched up cord. Okay. Now, the nice way about stitching it from the half end up toward the business end is this. When you go to use it, you can unplug it and you can go to work. Maybe you only need a very short extension cord. Okay, You don't have to undo the entire stitch. Or if you do, all you have to do, you can stand on the end, pull this, and it comes unstitched. If you haven't stitched it up, undone it all the way, and you've only needed a short piece, you can just get put it back together by continuing the stitch from there. That's the stitch method. Alright, I want to show you the coil method. Now I'm only showing you the coil method because I want to show you what never ever to do with a cord, a rope, an extension cord, anything. Never coil. Okay. The coil method, if you leave your end out, that's always a good thing. But the coil method goes like this. You wrap it around your arm, your elbow and hand. Now this is quick and easy the first time. But what you're doing, every time you wrap this around, you're putting a wrap, a, a twist, in the cable. So I've already twisted it about five times. By the time I'm done, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen. I've just put fifteen twists in this wire. If you don't believe me, try it. And uh, you'll see you're putting twists in that wire, which makes it very unruly. Uh, the first time you do this, it'll pay out fairly easily. It just gets worse, though. This you can wrap up. You can use the Velcro or uh, this uh, method and hang it up. I'd like to show you a, uh, a figure eight method, and I use a figure eight for my hoses. I don't use this for extension cords or anything like that. Uh, it just doesn't seem real appropriate. Uh, and it's it's really a different way of folding it. Instead of wrapping my hose in coils where I'm twisting it, one twist for every, every loop, uh, I'm going to lay a figure eight. So I lay it out here, and I start creating this figure eight in the ground on the ground, and this is not putting any coils in it because I'm coiling it one way for one loop, coiling it back for the next one, so it's essentially folding it back and forth, and it actually pays out very nicely from here as well. Let me show you what this looks like when it's all done. Okay? Thanks for watching.